Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox 2 video and today we're actually we're doing something a little interesting but before we get into that just wow I didn't realize this but after the stream ended yesterday we went up by like over 10 subscribers in literally a few hours like that is insane cannot thank everyone enough who subscribed there and obviously watches the videos left likes on the stream and obviously watch the stream as well many many thanks so I'm gonna set a little goal let's see if we can get 1,100 subscribers before the 10th of September. Yeah, there's a little goal. I don't really set goals much, but yeah, there's a goal. Let's see if we can try and break that, because that'll be pretty impressive. That's some, we've been doing some good channel growth recently, which is awesome. So yeah, there's that. Now let's put it all out of the way. So what we're going to be doing today is, as we pause this simulation here, uh, actually, no, we can keep it going actually. Uh, it's so pretty. There's so many objects in this custom simulation of mine. So we are going to be going to the brightest star in the game that I know about, which is R136A1, and also this idea was subscribe. Oh, this idea was commented by a subscriber, so you know who you are. Many thanks. It's a good idea. So we're gonna do this. So yeah, this star here, which is the crazy bright star that we we visited it a few years ago. So, oh, not years ago, a few days ago in the previous video. So yeah, this is the brightest star that I know about in the game, which is this thing. R136A1, and it has a luminosity of 800,000 suns, or well, 800,000 and then 50,000 suns. So you may say, oh, Eta Carinae is the brightest. Well, if we um, pull it just out here, Eta Carinae is only 500,000, and this guy is 800,000. So this is brighter than that, and it's also brighter than the pistol star is. So yeah, this is basically the king. I, I don't know any object which is brighter than this. So if you do, please say, is it bright? If you know any object which is brighter than. 800,000, like, that is just insane, yeah, 800,000 and then 50,000 suns in luminosity. If you know there's another star which is brighter, please tell me, because, yeah, I I, this is the brightest star I know about. Yeah, so we're going to be making this star as large as UI Scuti, which is the largest star, and then we're going to put it in the solar system, and we're going to see the carnage that this star will do. So, yeah, this is going to be pretty interesting, because we need to make it that big. So, 7.94 AU to be precise, so we're going to go and do that. So we're going to go to 7.94, like that. And now this star is as large as you guys could see. This is going to get insane, just look at this thing. So we're going to just save that as, we'll just call it Mega. Let's call it Mega. Yeah, Mega R1, like that. So we're going to save that as a custom object, might as well use it, it's a super bright thing. So now we're going to delete both of these guys. Head back to our poor little solar system, wherever it is. Um, where is that? Um, all right. where, where we go? Oh, there we are. So we'll head back to the solar system here. So then we are going to want to slow down time, put it to a few hours as usual. So we'll put it to one hour. So then what we're going to do is we are going to obviously delete the sun because we don't want to cause any supernovas. So actually, no, we'll add the new star first. So there it is. This crazy look how big this is. It's bigger than the orbit of Jupiter. Oh, this is going to get insane. So we're going to plop it right there. Then we are going to delete the sun. And there we go. So, as you remember from the video where I replaced the sun with the regular size version of this, it annihilated everything. But now it's even bigger. This could destroy Sedna. Because Sedna seems to be the most unique or the most safe object as usual. It usually survives these episodes because it's so far away. But it said there may be in a bit of trouble now, because this object is a lot bigger than it originally was in that previous video. So we're going to see what kind of trash and what kind of trouble this is going to cause. So look at poor old Saturn here. Oh no. And we'll make we'll make it so all the objects orbit as well, because we don't want them to go crazy. So there we go. Orbit. So now they should be in orbit. So we're going to slow down time to a few minutes, because it only takes minutes for this star to roast stuff. So you're going to 8 seconds here. So now we're going to hit play. Look at the temperature of Saturn. 500, 6, 700, 1000. Look, it's still going up. Look at that temperature. What about that dwarf planet here? Or little asteroid? Yeah, look at the temperature on that as well. It's all due to how much light it reflects. And this doesn't reflect any light, apparently. So this is going to get destroyed. But Saturn here. 3000 degrees. How's Neptune doing? 600 degrees. Sedna? Oh, Sedna's still in the cold. But is it going to warm up? It is warming up. So we'll keep an eye out on that. So let's see, uh, where's Uranus? How's that doing? So Uranus doesn't cope well against big stars like this. Yeah, 2000 degrees. So there we go. Uh, what's this one over here? Pluto! Pluto's already is already um, losing material as we can see in the little picture. Look at this thing. Oh no. Poor Pluto. 
So we're going to now speed this up a bit. Oh, and this Chiron, this um, asteroid there is now getting vaporized. Yeah, sorry, but you're not going to last. <laughs> Alright, oh my god. How's Saturn doing? Alright, Saturn's roasted up to 4,000 now. Uranus, 2,000. Neptune is at 2,000 as well. Now let's check on Sedna. 500 degrees and Planet 9, 400 degrees. So even 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 Planet 9 is getting a big effect from this. So yeah, usually when you just add the basic UI Scutty and it doesn't, Planet 9 still stays pretty cold. But this star is a powerhouse just for the amount of luminosity it has. So these dwarf planets out here, they're not going to survive. They're just going to get vaporized. So we're going to put the speed this up and we're just going to watch as all these objects are eventually just going to disappear. Or if they don't disappear, we'll manually make them disappear because they should disappear. So, yeah, we'll keep an eye out on that. Yeah, the, these guys aren't going to survive. Where, where's Pluto? How small are you? 600? Yeah, it's getting smaller. Oh, something just collided with it. Look at that big impact mark there. Oh, that must have been the planets that were inside it when I placed it. So that's pretty crazy. So, yeah, I've always loved doing these videos where we just had a big star in the middle because it's crazy. So... Let's see. Nothing's really getting destroyed. This is surprising. I don't think it's meant to do that. I, I reckon these guys are meant to get vaporized. Like, surely they will, right? <laughs> oh, it's warming up still. Let's see, look, it is losing material, but it's not really... Its radius and mass isn't going down. But if we go to materials here, we can see it is losing mass, apparently. So something is happening. Yeah, rate of mass loss from heating and solar winds. Well, this guy is very, very hot. <laughs> As we see, 50,000. And... Yeah, this would release a lot of radiation, so... Yeah. I don't know how these dwarf planets are surviving, because they should be gone. <laughs> there's no way they would survive, especially like Charlinko here. Like, there's no way these guys... Yeah, 116. Yeah, this thing's vaporized. Just get rid of it, because it shouldn't be surviving. This Chiron as well. Yeah, this one's getting vaporized properly. Look, yeah, that's what should be happening to all of these guys. Look, it's taking years for it to happen, but as we can see, it is getting destroyed. So... We'll speed this up even more, as fast as we can go. And we're going to eventually watch as this Chiron object here becomes nothing. It's just going to vaporize. Are these guys getting any smaller? But it looks like they're okay. How's Sedna doing? 500 still. Planet 9 is good out there. 400, so... How's that? Iris is at 800. Huh. Interesting. So normally we can't have them on their regular orbits, but yeah, we can't really do anything. Obviously, they all crash into the sun, or all crash into our star here, so... Yeah, that's not too good. And it looks like the Chiron object has completely vaporized now, so that's that. So Saturn... I don't know how you're surviving this, <laughs> because, yeah, that's not too good. So let's just check up on this. Has Saturn had any change whatsoever? So Saturn is originally 5,832, so... This is a little bigger than usual. I'm guessing that's just when I save the simulation. So yeah, nothing's happened to Saturn. Uranus, I'm assuming, is the same. Yeah, it looks the same. And Neptune, also the same. So yeah, the gas giants are fine. But Pluto, on the other hand... Yeah, that's that should be our next thing on the kill list. Since it is the closest um, rocky body to the main star now. So is anything going to happen? What if, if we manually make it go to 200, will it get smaller? So is it going to get any smaller? That's very peculiar how it doesn't get vaporized. Because you think, with a star being that close and that bright, it, this guy shouldn't last. It's really strange. Look, it's 100. Is it going to get any smaller? Or we just lower it? Because this is what should be happening. It's taken it, it, years. It's years have passed by now. So it should be happening. You saw that Chiron planet. That got destroyed. And that is a lot smaller than Pluto. So how is Pluto surviving? You think it would... Um, be going because it's also that was also a rocky object so we're just going to manually make pluto vaporize because if we put it to 10 surely it's going to vaporize now come on vaporize is, it gonna, is there anything going to happen to it because remember if we look at the um, mass loss here it, ha it has been losing a bit of mass it's only reset i think because of that That's strange what about this one here yeah see look these are losing a lot of mass look that is a lot of how many moons is that loss not many moons but it's losing a lot of mass which is not good. See that? It's losing mass very slowly, but it's going to take ages, so... We could try doing the simulation. We could try and make it... Like, not accurate at all. So if we put it to... We can make it completely inaccurate. We can make it speed the simulation up more and actually watch if these guys are actually going to vaporize on. So we'll speed it up as fast as we can go here. So... Oh, that is very crazy. 
So are these guys going to get smaller? Because we can see it's losing mass. It's, it's happening right there. But if we look at mass loss in moon. So see that mass, it is losing mass. Total mass loss. See, it is losing mass. But it's just taking a very, very long time to lose mass. So I don't know if it will do that in real life or in reality. But that's what the game seems to want to do. So I'm guessing we're just going to have to watch this for a while. <laughs> Even Planet Nine's doing like years here. That's just how long this is taking. That is crazy. Okay, Saturn, how are you doing? Is Saturn losing any mass? We can have a look. Okay, it is losing... It's losing a bit of mass. It hasn't even lost any... Like, yeah, Saturn is barely getting affected by this. Look, it's only lost 20,000 kilograms. But if we look at something like Iris... Iris has lost over a moon of mass. As we can see, look, total mass loss, 1.06 moons. So, Iris... Yeah, Iris has got smaller, because Iris was originally about 1,100, around that sort of size in radius, but it's all been half so yeah iris has definitely been affected by this but is it going to get any smaller like it's not it's just gets stuck around around in the hundreds like all of the objects here they're all getting stuck around six or five, five or six hundred like we can look at these guys here two that was at 200 100 see this one's going down farther 300 so they're getting they're basically just getting stuck in triple digits for some reason it's very peculiar because you'd think that they would get vaporized by now like pluto uh, where's pluto gone how is Pluto still existing here? Like, it's, it should just be gone. Like, that's what should really be happening here. But we can't run it any quicker, which is the problem here. I'm trying to run it as fast as we can, but it won't go any quicker. Like, dang it. Like, we're going at minus 1.01. Like, can we go any lower than this? Like, I don't know what these options do. I don't want to mess with it. Like, oh, man. Target time. Yeah, that's, that's pretty crazy here. Oh, we could turn these options off, maybe? No, I don't know if I want to do that. Because I think that's like part of the game we're messing with there. Yeah, I don't want to mess with that. Oh, God. Item mode. I don't want to play with any of that. Alright, so this is really crazy, actually. Hey, let's try the Hattable Zone. Does this even have a Hattable Zone? This is like... We can zoom out as far as you want. It doesn't look like this star has a Hattable Zone at all. <laughs> that's ridiculous. This... Thing is a monster. Like we're on the Hatchable Zone, as we can see here. But we'll zoom out. We will zoom out. We'll put grid mode on. So we're uh, a thousand, ten thousand light years. There is no zone to this star. That is just how ridiculous it is. It doesn't even have a Hatchable Zone because you can't live around this star in any realistic situation without being completely roasted to death. Because this star, yeah, you don't want to mess with it. Look at, this, look at this. It's still going. How are these dwarf planets going? Like in reality, it's been. 3,000 years. I don't think it would take 3,000 years to destroy these tiny little dwarf planets. Like, they should all be gone. Like, we might, we just manually remove them because they should not exist anymore. Oh, planet, whoops. I was not going to do that. I didn't even select planet 9 on the grid there. That's weird. There we go. So it should be something like this. This is all that should be left. In reality, like, do you guys agree with me here or do you think those dwarf planets will survive? I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll probably ask a question in the comments about it. Surely they will get destroyed. Like, in theory, like... This guy's 8,000 luminosity of sun, and we saw that Chiron object, that was being affected, but the other objects were a little further out. You'd think they'd get affected as well, just because of how big this star is and how luminous it is. Surely, its luminosity would destroy it. Like, even the gas giants, even these guys have lost mass. Like, if we look at Uranus, for example, it's lost 0 0.00146 moons. Like, it has still lost mass, so unless I'm not playing the simulation fast enough, it should have, in reality, be losing mass here. How's Neptune doing? Which one's lost the most mass out of the gas giants? Looks like Uranus has. I'm guessing because it has less, less mass overall, so it's been affected more, but we can just play this for eternity now. I don't think the gas giants are going to go down anytime soon. So I know, like, if you've heard about, like, the hot Jupiter exoplanets, they survive for years around really, really close to stars, but you've got to remember, they are gas giants. They can, they can survive with losing tons and tons of mass, but a little dwarf planet... There's no way they can survive. Like, even if Earth, we tried it with Earth, Earth wouldn't be able to survive if we put it close to a um, hot star. So how would these little dwarf planets survive? And it just makes no sense to me. I think it's just the game doing that, because I'm pretty sure, in reality, dwarf planets like that would not survive a star of this luminosity and size. Remember, this is the size of the largest star ever discovered, and it's got the luminosity of the brightest star I know about. So 
you think that it would destroy him. But yeah, it's up to you guys. Do you agree with me or do you disagree? Let's see what you have to say in the comments. It's always interesting to see what you guys have to say. But yeah, there we go for this video, guys. That is pretty much it. And this will pretty much be our conclusion to this. Sedna is the only one I think which may survive just because of its far away distance. But Planet Nine is probably the safest one out of them all. But Sedna is the only exception I'd have to surviving this and also any other dwarf planets which are out in that sort of proximity as well any any other dwarf planets which are that far away but still even Sedna got warmed up a bit but yeah it's mostly all of the dwarf planets in just beyond the orbit of Neptune all of those should have been annihilated a long time ago not it shouldn't have taken thousands of years so yeah it's a very peculiar thing but yeah tell me what you think in the comments I'm interested to hear what you have to say but yeah there we go guys so hopefully you enjoyed this video like I said Make sure you did hit that like button, subscribe, help us on the way to 1,100. Let's see if we can get it before September the 10th, because that would be awesome. I've got a special sort of tribute video coming out tomorrow, so if you don't know what it's about, then you just have to wait and see. But if some of you uh, know a lot about like space exploration history, then you may know. So yeah, see if anyone knows or anyone will guess it as well. Leave your ideas in the comments what I could be making a tribute to tomorrow. So yeah, there we go. But... Yeah, that's pretty much it. So make sure you guys all have a good day. And we're going to blow this sun up. <laughs> so explode. And they're all gone. <laughs> Boom. So these guys are right. Okay, looks like they have. Oh no, Uranus has been destroyed. Uranus is gone. But yeah, there we go. Yeah, so hopefully you guys all enjoyed. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Goodbye.